Today we're discussing micro towns, small towns, towns that all live in one building, ghost towns, and a town that still gets their mail delivered by donkey. The United States has a huge population of over 330 million people, but the country is also huge. In fact, it's the third largest country behind only Russia and Canada. The population density is only 96 people per square mile. That means if we spread out all the people evenly throughout the country, there would only be 96 people in each square mile. Compare that to New York City, which has a population density of a staggering 29,302 per square mile. In this video, we'll look at some of the most remote and secluded towns in the US. It's not surprising that none of the towns are on the densely populated East Coast. The middle flyover states are looking east when it comes to remote towns and saying, hold my beer. But that's nothing compared to the deserts out west, where they look at the prairie states and say, hold my beer. Oh wait, you can't, because we're so remote that there's no one within a hundred miles to even hold my beer. Mmm, you get the picture. This list will be no ordinary list, especially including that donkey town. Get ready, because we're about to take you to the middle of nowhere. Number 10 is Ely, Nevada. Ely is the largest city and county seat of White Pine County and has a population of about 4,000 residents. It is truly in the middle of nowhere, situated in northeastern Nevada, far from any other city. Its closest city is Salt Lake City, Utah, which is three and a half hours away. Reno is five hours away and Las Vegas is just under four hours away. So no matter which direction you head, you will be secluded when living in Ely. In 1878, Vermont resident J.W. Long came to White Pine County and set up a camp known as Ely after discovering gold. This will be a common theme when looking at remote towns. Gold brought people in, and when the mines dried up, the people left. Those who stayed were left in an isolated shell of a once bustling town. For the 4,000 people still in Ely, they have scorching hot summers and mild winters. Ely is a tourism hub despite its remoteness and is home of the Nevada Northern Railway Museum. The railroad museum features the Ghost Train of Old Ely, a working steam engine passenger train that travels the historic tracks from Ely to the Robinson Mining District. The town is a window into the past and is worth a visit if you should find yourself in the middle of nowhere. A friend of mine was recently passing through Ely and had no intentions of stopping there. However, as luck would have it, his car broke down and the town folk took him in for several days as they figured out what to do with his vehicle. The closest rental place was all the way in Salt Lake City and it took them days to get someone out to tow his car. Number 9 is Strang, Nebraska. Strang is in the middle of the state in the middle of the country. It's a tiny town at the crossroads of routes US 81 and Nebraska Highway 74 in Fillmore County. With a population of around 34 people, in its heyday in 1890, it had closer to 300 people. The town's post office closed years ago and the imposing abandoned school building greets those entering the town that is only 0.12 square miles. Despite this, the town is home to a library and the Strang Museum, which highlights artifacts from the early homesteaders that came out west to stake their claim to a piece of land. What's most notable about this town is its one restaurant, Bubba's Anytime. It's the town's watering hole and a museum in and of itself. It's decorated with relics of days gone by in string and photos documenting the history of the town. It's family owned and operated and the original owner, who is still alive, immigrated there from Eastern Europe and with it she brought her kolaches. It's hard to believe that you can get kolaches, a Czech and Slovak food, out in one of America's most remote towns. Those who visit the restaurant at lunchtime will likely meet everyone in town as well as the owner. It's one of the coolest of all the remote towns. Number 8 is Whittier, Alaska. It's no surprise that Alaska finds itself on this list because it is the biggest state with the second smallest population. In fact, the population density in Alaska is only 1.3 people per square mile, but Whittier is unique even for Alaska. The entire town lives in one large building. Whittier, Alaska is a quiet town on the west side of Prince William Sound, nestled between picturesque mountains. But if you're picturing a collection of houses, a quaint downtown, and a cute little general store on the corner, think again. Instead, on the edge of town, there's a 14-story building called Begich Towers. It's a former army barracks that looks more like an aging hotel than an entire town, and yet it's home to most of the town's 200 residents. Everything a town needs is inside the building. 
The post office is near the entrance, and the police station is down the hall. There's a school, a hospital, and government offices all within the building. Getting to the remote town isn't easy. You can only get to Whittier by sea or by taking a long one-lane tunnel through the mountains, which at any given time only runs one way and is completely closed at night. Number 7 is Rhyolite, Nevada. This is no ordinary town. It's a ghost town, a shell of its former self. It's in Nye County, two hours from Las Vegas and less than five miles from Death Valley. It's in the middle of the desert, which only adds to the feeling of being in the middle of nowhere. The town was established in 1905 as a mining town as one of a series of towns that popped up during the gold rush. In its heyday, the town was home to 5,000 people. Today, population zero. Visitors to the town can still see the shell of the Cook Bank, as well as the old school building, a general store, and the old train station. Visitors are also drawn to the cemetery, which is just a collection of gravestones telling the stories of people with big dreams that lived in the remote and secluded town over a hundred years ago. Despite how deep into the desert Rhyolite is, the town is considered one of the most photographed ghost towns in the West. Despite there no longer being a population, visitors can see what the town once was as people flooded into the middle of the remote Nevada desert, hoping to strike it rich. Number 6 is Pie Town, New Mexico. With a name like Pie Town, it's a wonder that more people haven't flocked to such a delicious town. True to its name, there is an annual pie festival, so don't be disappointed. Its name is no accident, coming from an early bakery for making dried apple pies that was established by Clyde Norman in the early 1920s. The town is two and a half hours from Albuquerque and has a population of a whopping 111 people. Though it doesn't see as many tourists as the name might suggest, the town does serve as a respite for people hiking the Continental Divide Trail. The CDT is one of the three major trails known as the Triple Crown of Hiking. Most notably is the Appalachian Trail out east, and the second most traveled is the Pacific Crest Trail. For the real avid hikers, they will tackle the Continental Divide Trail, which is 3,028 miles, spanning from the Mexican border in New Mexico all the way to the Canadian border in Montana. Those brave enough to tackle the trail can stop for pie in this aptly named, albeit very remote, town. Number 5 is Crested Butte, Colorado. Located nearly four hours west of Colorado Springs with a population of only 1,600 people, it is situated in the picturesque Rocky Mountains. This former coal mining town still draws visitors for its skiing, mountain biking, and hiking. Its original inhabitants were the Ute Native Americans who would use the area as a summer residence, though they were sadly displaced as Americans headed west. To get to Crested Butte, you'll drive through some of America's most remote and beautiful scenery. Though you can access the town year-round, visitors need to check road conditions for closures, which can be routine in Colorado snowstorms. The very existence of the town is a bit of a miracle. Like many mining towns that closed down, at one point Crested Butte had a population of only 200 people. The town maintained its ranching industry and was able to hang on until 1961 when it opened its first ski resort and revitalized the town. In fact, the town's ski resort is still owned and operated by the same family that opened it in 1961. Another fun fact about Crested Butte is that it has a rum distillery, and its rum was named the best in the world at the World Rum Awards in England. Yes, there is such a thing as the World Rum Awards. And like any old mining town, Crested Butte even has a ghost story. The town has been named the most haunted ski town. Number 4 is Marfa, Texas. While Marfa may be remote, it doesn't lack visitors when it comes to its famed Marfa lights. Located in West Texas, Marfa has a population of just under 1,800 people. Its closest towns are in Mexico and is nearly six hours from its nearest city of San Antonio. It is surrounded by mostly high desert in all directions, so no matter which direction you drive, you will feel like you are in the middle of nowhere. No amount of desert, scorching hot Texan sun, or remoteness can keep people away, however. The Marfa Lights, particularly the Marfa Lights Festival, draws tourists from all over the world. But what are these lights that are so mysterious that someone from Paris could find themselves in the middle of nowhere? The lights are an unexplained phenomenon. Accounts of the strange lights seen just east of Marfa began during the 19th century and continue to this day. 
Ranchers, Native Americans, students, and famous meteorologists have all reported seeing lights that seemingly have no source, shimmering on the horizon in an area that is nearly uninhabited and extremely difficult to travel across. The mystery lights are reported as being red, blue, and white, and usually appear randomly throughout the night, no matter the season or no matter the weather. Perhaps Marfa only secludes itself from other people, but not to extraterrestrial life. Number 3 is Kahakuloa Bay, Hawaii, on the island of Maui. Maui is known for its perfect beaches, world-class luxury resorts, and a popular tourist destination. This scenic island is also home to soaring mountains, stunning natural beauty, winding coastlines, as well as some of the most remote spots in the state. Sadly, in recent news, Maui is often associated with the recent wildfires that destroyed most of the town of Lahaina and killed nearly a hundred people. However, across the island is a remote little fishing village with only a hundred residents, most of whom are descendants of the native Hawaiians that originally inhabited the island before it was annexed by the United States. The nearest big city is Honolulu, but that requires a flight to get to. The next closest would be Los Angeles, which is a staggering 2,500 miles to the east. Part of the isolation is due to the lack of roadways leading into it. Kahakuloa is only accessible by the somewhat maintained Kahakili Highway, which is a winding road that straddles sea cliffs and is often only one lane wide and has various blind turns and few guardrails. Its isolation is part of its charm. Many native Hawaiians have encouraged a practice of responsible tourism when coming to the islands in order to ensure that these towns stay untouched and uncluttered by visitors. Number 2 is Utkayagvik, Alaska, formerly known as Barrow. It's no surprise that a second town in Alaska made this list, but Utkayagvik is remote even for Alaska. It's America's northernmost city and the ninth most northern city in the world. It sits on a beautiful coastline, but there will be no sunbathing here. The coastline is the Arctic Ocean, and you're more likely to see a polar bear than a beachgoer. It is also quite populated for a city in the Arctic with a population of around 5,000 people. It sits 350 miles north of the Arctic Circle and is about 2,500 miles from the North Pole. There are no roads in or out of Utkayagvik, so you can arrive by ship or plane, but we hear Santa Claus arrives by a flying sled. Unfortunately, that also goes for goods and food that need to be imported via plane or ship. Ships can only travel in warmer months when the Arctic Ocean isn't frozen over. This limited access for importing goods means that you will pay $36.96 for half of a watermelon. Literally. If the proximity to anywhere else isn't isolating enough, Utkayagvik sees three months of 24-hour darkness during the polar night in winter. To be fair, they also get three months of 24-hour sunlight in the summer as residents struggle to sleep through the midnight sun. Despite its remoteness, Barrow has a post office, a high school with a huge football field overlooking the Arctic Ocean. I mean, what other kid in America can play sports alongside polar bears? They also have a few restaurants and hotels for those who are okay with paying nearly $40 for some melon. And number one is Supai, Arizona. While over 5.5 million people visit the Grand Canyon each year, few realize that there is a town in the canyon. Supai is 8 miles from the nearest road and nestled deep inside a valley at the bottom of Havasu Canyon. Supai is the ancient home of the Havasupai Native American tribe who have been quietly living inside one of the world's seven natural wonders for more than 1,000 years. Supai is so remote that it receives U.S. postal mail delivered by mule. Each day, between 10 and 22 mules are used, along with one wrangler on horseback traveling 9 miles down into the canyon just to deliver mail to the Supai post office. The mail comes 5 days a week. If you are hoping to visit Supai, you'll need to be one of the lucky winners of an annual lottery to secure a permit to visit this remote town. Since no roads lead to Supai, lucky permit holders will need to trek the nearly 10 miles into the canyon on foot, on horseback, or for the real lucky, a helicopter. When you get to Supai, you will feel as if you've stepped back in time. There is a series of homes built from nearby elements surrounded by a general store, cafe, post office, elementary school, a lodge, and two churches. Residents here still speak Havasupai, grow corn, squash, and beans, and weave coiled baskets just as their ancestors did for generations. Without a doubt, Supai is the most remote town in the lower 48.